Hey guys, 420 Scene here, back at it again with another video. Hope everyone out there is having themselves a super stony day. Let me know what you're token on and where you watch the video from. I really like to know. I know I say in the beginning of every video, but like, I really do like to know. I like to see what all you guys are token on, you know, all different strains out there and all that good stuff. But anyway, be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret unlisted grown smoke videos, or if you want some one-on-one -on -one grow help, check us out on Patreon. I'm gonna have the link in the upper right-hand corner over here. Before we start the video, all you gamers out there, be sure to follow us on Twitch. And if you got Amazon Prime, do us one better. Be sure to use your free Twitch Prime subscription so you can unlock some really cool 420 emotes and not have to worry about ads on top of that. You know, we play a lot of old school COD zombies and Dead by Daylight. So if that's something you're into, I'm gonna have the link right up here above. All right, so let's get started. Question number one, Mark Crawford asked, cut a GDP auto a week ago, about 10% amber trikes. Been trying for a week at 72 degrees, 65 5% RH, no smell, what's going wrong? <sighs> Start off with my man, your humidity is a little bit too high. Shoot for like 50% to 60% tops, 10 to 12 day dry, that's what you want. It's what I've done and I've had excellent flavor and smoke, you know. Don't focus on the smell though as much until you're completely done and started curing. And the reason I say that is because the smell is, it's gonna change from time to time. You also don't want a super quick dry as well as you don't want the dry to take like too long either. You don't want to be forever, you know what I mean? So it doesn't look like you really have that big of a problem. Just drop your humidity a little bit and give it maybe another week and see how it works out. Question number two, Smee Music asks, bang for buck, best four by four foot light. There are a lot of really good choices out there, but if you had to hold my feet to the fire and pick one, it would probably be the Bloom Plus BP3000. It's less than $250. I got mine like three years ago. Super reliable. I think I did my very first auto run with my Bloom Plus BP3000 and I had excellent results. Results. So that'd be my first choice. If I had to pick a second choice, it'd probably be the Mars Hydro FC series, specifically the FC 4800. That's what I had. And, you know, I thought that was a really good four by four foot light. Now, there are other really good lights out there, you know, and, that I haven't mentioned. Now, if there are any other really good lights out there that I haven't mentioned, totally drop it in the comment section. The lights I picked are only because I've used them and had great results. I don't wanna, I don't wanna start picking lights, bang, best bang for your buck. If I personally haven't used it, like, I can go off of other people's recommendation, but if you're asking me specifically, those are gonna be my top two. So my number one's gonna be the Bloom Plus BP3000, and my number two is gonna be the Mars Hydro FC4800. Question number three, Matt Conway asked, why do you prefer solid pots over fabric, and what was the science behind your switch? Example, what are the benefits of fabric compared to solid? I don't wanna say that I prefer one over the other, but like, only because like they both have positives and negatives, you know what I'm saying? Like, fabric containers are good because they allow more oxygen and more breathability for the roots. And it's also a lot harder to root bound with fabric containers. They're just gonna keep wrapping themselves around. But with solid plastic containers, I like the fact that I can water evenly. And I know some people are gonna argue this because I feel like I made a video about this like a long time ago and people are arguing, oh, you know. I just don't really like whenever I use fabric containers and whenever I have to water, it ends up like running through the sides. No matter what I do, trust me, my soil is even, everything is good. It's just, it keeps running from the side and it's just more of a personal preference type of thing. So like with the plastic containers, it waters a lot evenly. I just prefer, it doesn't mean that plastic containers are better than fabric or fabric is better than plastic. It's just kind of what I'm using right now. There is no real, you know what I mean? There's no master science behind it. It's just something I prefer. Question number four, Earl Van Fleet asks, so any reason why you don't like sativas? <laughs> I knew this question was bound to come up at some point on a Q&A and they just, make me so paranoid and I just don't really like the feeling that I get with sativas and I just love my indicas and my hybrids honestly. They're more mellow, they help me sleep better and it's just one of the biggest reasons why I like to self-medicate and there's nothing wrong with sativas, they just don't work for me specifically. It's just not, the feeling I get from sativas is not what I like. So if you like sativas, <laughs> have at it, you know what I mean? This is just my opinion. Question number five, never too old to grow asked, with an organic grow, feeding every four weeks. What if your ladies take longer to finish than eight weeks, say like nine to 10 weeks? Would you add more amendments or a tea or just write it out? Now, this is a really, really good question. I don't think anybody's even asked this before. So like, all right, so you figure with eight weeks, you would have to top dress twice, right? You know, four weeks and four weeks, that'd be eight weeks. But let's just say you got the additional week or two. I wouldn't want to add any more amendments to the soil itself, but I would add a tea or something. Or the other option is you could write it out because 
you know, they're packing on their weight around week four to week six, and you're just you're just trying to finish it off. So just give them water and let the leaves fade out. I'm assuming that you're waiting for the amber trikes at this point. You know, I'm assuming that's why you're asking. Adding more amendments to something that's gonna be done after an extra week or two, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense because you're essentially wasting those amendments where you could use them for another run or give them a little bit of tea to finish out the last week or two, but that was a really good question. So <laughs> to kind of wrap up, cause I know I was kind of rambling a little bit, you know, different options out there. I would not add anything new. I would either let it ride out or do a tea. Every situation and every scenario is gonna be different depending on what your ladies need at whatever given time. Like if you're on your final weeks or so. So if you're in a situation where they need something, then maybe just give them a tea. But if you're in a situation where there's nothing really wrong, they're just taking a little bit longer, then I would just ride it out, honestly. But again, man, that was a really good question. Question number six, Corey Parrish asks, would so many people tell me the proper watering to feed ratio? I'm more confused than ever. Should I feed, feed water, feed, water, feed, or feed right up until harvest with a seven to tay flush instead? What is the best technique to assure the best outcome? Outcome. Now, the reason you get so many different answers is because there is no one right answer. It really depends on your ladies, and it also depends on your grow setup as well. Like, for example, I mix all my amendments when I do my initial mix. So I just water and then top dress once a month. So for me, I would just water all the way with the occasional, you know, microbial inoculant, maybe some fish shit or something like that, or some veg scrap tea. But then if you have somebody that uses like the liquid based nutrients and don't really top dress with anything, I've always recommended doing doing a feed, water, and feed again. But then there are other variables involved. Like, let's just say if your ladies go a long time without needing water, then you would wanna feed more often than not. So like I said, it really depends on your grow setup. Whenever you find yourself in a situation where you got a lot of different answers, it's most likely because there is no one right answer. There's a lot of gray area when it comes to horticulture. So the bottom line is it really depends on your grow setup. So if you're running organic like I do, you don't really have to water, feed, you know, because you already put everything in your initial mix in your top dressing so you're just adding water but somebody with you know do, following us like a schedule like let's just say you're using ocean forest like i used to do and then you kind of want to like after the four weeks is over you kind of want to switch off and do the liquid based nutrients then that's when i would do the feed water feed water that's why you're not going to get like a specific number one right answer it really depends on your setup question number seven local kook 2651 asks what is your pk booster tea recipe and what weekend flowering would you use to PK booster tea? See, I'm not sure if you're talking about a PK booster in my tea. I don't have any kind of PK booster tea recipe per se. Like I have a phosphorus tea and a banana tea, which is, you know, that's gonna be your K, your potassium. I think, I don't know if you're getting that confused because what I would do is I would use compost tea and during the transitional period, like between the top dresses, I would add a PK booster. So like, for example, let's just say that I top dress week one of flowering. I would wait until those four weeks are up before a top dress again and then I would use my PK booster because even if I do top dress it's going to still take a week for it to break down anyway so you know it's going to keep the nutrients going so that way you're not starving your ladies during those weight building weeks so I don't know if that answers your question I don't know if you specifically were talking about adding a PK booster in the tea or just a tea recipe with phosphorus and potassium so I hope I answered your question my man question number eight I hope I don't butcher your name my man Tom Derfleur asked when will you be getting new shades never in your life question number nine super muffin 30 asked hey scene what do you do to water your girls if you go out of town for a vacation what you mean <laughs> when i'm in the middle of a run i don't really go on vacation besides i'm too busy with school and my music projects and the grows when i have them going on that's why i like i'm not running anything until august 1st see it's really tough when you're doing a run and you have to go on vacation because it's really hard to trust anybody to keep an eye on them because most likely anyone that you know is probably going to know less about grow than even you so it's kind of a tough situation i mean maybe you could have somebody look after your ladies if you know somebody that's you know pretty well seasoned and knows what they're doing but it's a tough call you know so my suggestion to you is to either run some kind of irrigation system and if that's not possible then you're just going to have to plan out your vacations ahead of time like if you know you're going to be doing a run 
you already know it's gonna take three or four months. Are you okay with not going on vacation for those three or four months? That's what you gotta ask yourself. And then just kind of work around that. Question number 10, She Sharp Shoes asked, what is the average height of an auto flower? This one's tough. I mean, there is no average height, you know? Autos are more unpredictable than Sammy from Shameless, okay? <laughs> question number 11, Graham asks, so serious question here. I've been reading about coconut milk or even coconut water being beneficial for soil, micro colonization. Have you tried this or has anyone tried this? You know, I remember the very, I remember the very first time somebody ever suggested coconut water to me. Then I did some research on it and used it for myself. And honestly, the best thing that I can tell you is that it definitely made my ladies happy. I'm not really too sure about the coconut milk part. I haven't used coconut milk, but the coconut water, it's really good because it's got a soil nutrient availability and can increase your yield because it's essentially helping with building up your macronutrients. And I'm not really sure if it's good for your soil microbes per se, but it's definitely beneficial for your root system. That would probably go hand in hand, you know what I'm saying? And that was a really good question, man. I haven't heard many people talk about coconut water in a while, but that is definitely a thing. All right, guys, so that's all the time that we have for today. Be sure to follow us on the community section because that's where we're doing our Q&As. Also, if you're a VIP member, your questions get answered before anybody else's. So before we close out today's video, I wanna give a huge shout out to everyone in our Patreon community. I really appreciate the love and support. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Turn your post notification bell on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and as always stay safe peace